Hi everybody, here we go. It is chapter seven of Clementine. Chapter seven. Um, it's Kelly and it's good to see you again. I'm so glad you're back to listen to the rest of the book. So um, all you have to do is sit back and relax and listen to chapter seven of Clementine by Sarah Pennypacker. And let me start by showing you the picture. I'll get a little closer. All right, let's see what's happening in that picture. Hmm, if you have an, any ideas, just see if what you thought was right. It looks like Clementine's in a chair and her mom's standing over her with a pan. All right, let's see what happens. I knew Friday was gonna be a bad day right from the beginning. Oh, now I might understand the picture. Maybe you guys will too. Because there were clear parts in my eggs. I can't eat it if it has clear parts, I reminded my mom. Eat around them, she said. Just eat the yellow parts and the white parts. But I couldn't because the clear parts had touched the yellow parts and the white parts. So all I had was toast. Have you got all your stuff? My dad asked as I was leaving. Of course, I said, right in my backpack. But I, when I went to show him my homework, three sentences about the planet Saturn, which I had decorated with pictures of some squirrels I'd seen in the park. It wasn't there. You better go check the black hole, he said. I gave my dad a that's not funny look, but I went back into my room to check. The black hole is what my dad calls the place under my bed. He says things mysteriously disappear there. I don't think father should be comedians. My homework paper was not under the bed and the rest of the day got even worse. On the bus, Margaret walked right past our usual seat and sat down next to Amanda Lee, even though all Amanda Lee can talk about is going to the mall, which is so boring. Plus, anyone with a name as beautiful as Amanda Lee um, is probably just a made up name. Then, as soon as I got to school, the teacher said, the following students are excused from recess so they can catch up on their journal writing. And I was one of the following students. Three times during journal writing, the teacher said, Clementine, you need to pay attention. And every time he said it, I was paying attention. I was paying attention to out the window where the fourth graders were playing pickle in the middle. And whenever the ball came anywhere near Margaret and Amanda Lee, they grabbed each other and shrieked. And they acted like they were getting murdered, which everyone knows means we are best friends. When my teacher moved my seat away from the, min from the window, I was G-L-A-D glad. I wrote all over my journal page, I don't care so hard that my pencil broke. And when I got home from school, I was planning on going straight into my room to draw a picture of me with my new best friend. But my dad was putting on his raincoat and it was not raining out. Fighting pigeons is not for the weak hearted, he said. It takes superhuman courage and resourcefulness and cleverness. When my dad talks like this, it means he has a new idea. You have another battle plan, I asked. Yep, he answered, and it's a doozy. I'll probably be promoted to general for this one. Uh, dad, you are already the general, remember? Oh, right, right, I'm so modest, I sometimes forget. Well, I bet I get the Medal of Honor. Dad, I might even be knighted for this one. Dad, I said. So what is the new battle plan? My dad looked around like he thought there might be spies sneaking up on us. Then he bent over and he whispered in my ear, psychological warfare. This sounded like a good one. So I followed him outside and I sat on the steps to watch. I could do that drawing later. First, my dad hosed off the sidewalk, then he sprayed the pigeons until they flew away. All the time he was muttering things like, oh, they're crafty all right, but I'm craftier. And it's a little known fact that pigeons were the eighth deadly plague to visit Egypt. Then he pulled a brown plastic, a plastic owl from a bag. He got a ladder and he climbed up the ladder and he put the owl right on top of the lion's head over the lobby door. I asked them what that was for. The pigeons will take one look at the owl and then they'll head for the hills, Dad said. 
Well, for another building. Pigeons are deathly afraid of owls. Yep, I'll probably be knighted. It's plastic, I reminded him. But the pigeons don't know that. That's the brilliance of my plan. I didn't see what was so brilliant. I didn't see how a brown plastic owl was going to frighten off a flock of pigeons who fought over who would to get to sit on the lion's head. And while we stood there, Dad admiring his brilliant battle plan and me worrying about it, all the pigeons came back. They settled on their regular perches all over the front of our building, except for a few who decided to sit on the owl's head. Polka Dotty would have scared them off, I said. Dad put the ladder and his raincoat away and he came over and sat beside me. He said, you still miss her, don't you sport? I nodded. Yes, I miss seeing her when I get home from school and I miss patting her where her fur was so soft right under her neck and I really miss hearing her purr when I fall asleep. I even miss the smell of her cat food. That's a lot of missing, my dad said. And she would have scared off those pigeons, wouldn't she, Dad? Absolutely. That was one terrifying cat. Dad, she would have been terrifying to those pigeons, I said. And then I had one of the most astounding ideas of my whole career. I jumped up. I gave my dad a kiss right where his beard stops being crunchy. Then I ran back into the apartment, went to my bedroom, and reached under the mattress where I kept my favorite picture of Polka. Then I ran to the copy shop at the corner. Can you make this bigger, I asked. How big do you want it, the clerk asked. All right, and before I turn the page, I wanna show you Clementine and her dad sitting on the front stoops of their building. You see the pigeons? Do you see the lion where they like to sit on? All right, so she's um, at this, the copy store. I took out my wallet and I laid all my money on the counter. How big can you make it for this much? The clerk counted my money and thought for one minute, hmm, I can make that cat the size of a German Shepherd for that much money. Perfect, I said. Then he took my money and the picture of Polka and told me to come back the next day at four o'clock. I ran home and I let myself into the apartment. My mom and dad were in the kitchen. One left, my dad said. One's all we need, said my mom. Do you think we should do it? I think so, my dad answered. I think it's time. Okay, my mom said. I'll call tomorrow. One is all we need? I slammed the door behind me so they, they would know that I was there. I slammed it so hard. If they were talking about getting rid of me so they'd only have one kid, the easy one, I wanted them to S-T-O-P stop. Not that I was worried. They probably weren't even talking about me anyway. Shh, my dad said, she's home. Okay, fine, I was worried. All right, and that's the picture of Clementine coming home and listening to her parents. All right, that was chapter eight. Um, click like if you like it, or you can even subscribe to hear all the books. Um, but thanks for coming, and I will see you in a few minutes. Um, to read chapter eight. All right, wherever you are, have a good day and I will see you soon. And thank you so much. I really appreciate you listening.